Okay, so thank you so much for attending the meeting. I'll be sure to update you all on all the questions that you had. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay, perfect. Also, Veronica, I actually had a question about the report you were supposed to send over. Can you give me some updates on that? I haven't received it. I actually turned that into Jamie last week. Um, she hasn't gotten it over to you. Let's go ahead and take that offline. All right, everybody, thank you so much for being oh, here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why do we need to take it offline? I would just prefer to have this conversation offline if oh, that's but no, you were you were prepared to call me out right now in front of everyone. So are you not calling Jamie out just because she's your team lead and you don't want it to look bad? Or why why aren't you willing to ask her on camera the same way you were asking me? I would just prefer to take it offline. I don't want to make a big deal out of this. Um let's just I'm not making have... a big deal out of it. I wanna know why you were fully ready to call me out in front of the other five people in this meeting. But Jamie gets offline hey rich babes it's friday i know you just got off of work so let's have some fun with some relatable office drama we can all laugh about oh thank goodness it's friday let's get into it i will not be back at the end of this video make sure that you like subscribe and share also rich babes i just launched my very first service for rich milan co it's called rich consulting where you're able to able to have an exclusive Exclusive session with me 30 minutes 60 minutes 90 minutes and we can talk about whatever it's all opinion based where we'll talk about whatever you like whether it's creative thinking or you just want my opinion on a situation I'm really excited I can't wait to actually connect with all of my rich babes so with that being said I'm not gonna hold you too long the link is down below and I will see you all next time stay rich two days ago I put 40 servings of laxatives in my lasagna, brought to work and put in the refrigerator, waiting for the horrible coworker who has been stealing my lunch every single day to eat it and sit back and catch them because I would know who it is because they'd have to run off to the bathroom all the time. Today, I have the biggest update yet. Ran to my car to make this video right now before my shift is even over because what we had were three suspects. Marge and Ben used the bathroom two times in that first hour or two and then were no shows yesterday at work. But I also realized that we had a third suspect, Chris. I didn't see Chris the first day and I didn't see Chris the second day. So now going to work today, I was trying to see if any of them showed up. And guess who did? Marge and Ben were back at work today. And so I asked them what the news was, why they were out yesterday. And they told me, Marge is pregnant. Marge is pregnant. They went to the bathroom two times yesterday or two days ago, to check two pregnancy tests that told them that she was in fact pregnant. They have been talking on the low for a while now. And so now she is pregnant and then went to the hospital yesterday to get a blood test. She is pregnant. So they are clear. They are not the culprits. They are fine. And I mean, congrats to them, I guess. That's a whole other situation I don't feel like getting into. Chris, Chris was a no-show today. And when I tried to figure out where Chris was, it's getting some shady answers for the boss. And what I remembered is Chris has been giving me the cold shoulder since I joined this job. Okay, I didn't even realize that he wasn't there the first day or I didn't see him the first day because he just avoids me. I don't talk to him. I don't ever see him. And so he's not there again today and that's unlike him. Two days in a row, he does not miss. So in my mind right now, I think it is Chris, but I'm not 100% sure either because I haven't been able to talk to him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out on Monday what exactly went on. Or actually, I just realized, wait, guys, I'm going to email. I have his company email. We're not like close, but I could say something like, hey, like send out an office email. Uh, I brought food to work and some of it went missing. And I've come down with like a pretty serious illness. Like if any of you like ate any of the food that I put in the fridge or ate anything that's not yours, please get back to me so I can tell you what the problem is. And maybe try and like trick somebody into like fessing up to it. But for the meantime, uh, Marge and Ben are pregnant. Like what is going on? And I'll just have to give an update on Monday about what else is happening. And also the last video is being viewed from all over the world. This is like happening in the US. So if you're from the US and you work, follow along. If you're not from, that's incredible that you guys are watching too. And look, I'm really not trying to drag this whole process out. I'm giving you the information in real time. I have to go back. I'm literally sweating in my car telling you this story. So follow along. I'm going to give an update on Monday or over the weekend if I hear back from his email or the company-wide email I'm going to send out. We're going to figure this out.
Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something right now. At the end of the day, I will fuck you up. And I'm trying to be the bigger person, even though you clearly are the bigger person. I don't know who needs to hear this, but there is so much power in having the ability to act dumb at work. I would actually argue that playing dumb can help you a lot when it comes to office politics. When someone says something insulting to you in an email or in a meeting, don't immediately retaliate. Play stupid. Sorry, what did you say, Bob? I didn't hear that. Would you mind repeating it? Now Bob has to repeat that snarky comment when everyone else is paying attention to him. One of the office cool kids comes up to you and says, working with Bob is such a nightmare. He is such an idiot. And instead of you putting yourself in a position of risk and gossiping, you say, oh, I haven't had any issues with our working relationship. I guess I just don't pay attention to that stuff. <laughs> Playing dumb isn't stupid. It's a strategy. What? Are you stupid? Jan Janet, what the hell are you talking about? Are you on crack, you stupid? Yes, Janet. The attachment was in the previous email. Idiot. Fuck you, Jill. You're a horrible fucking woman. This is why everybody hates you, Jill. This kind of shit, ineffective, fucking bullshit hair. Don't fuck the people at the workplace. Control the fire burning between your ties. Office romance is fun. But when it ends, and it will end, it will end badly. And then you will be sad because not only will you have to find a new lover, you'll have to find a new job because it will be awkward as fuck seeing this person every day. Better not to shit where you eat. See, co-workers be thinking they slick, but I'm slicker than Slippery Rick. Have y'all noticed that like when a co-worker don't like you, they start to pay attention to every little thing that you do? to try to get you in trouble like i am not your child i don't need you to watch me and then it's like a lot of the times them watching you like you need to be worried about your work your deadlines stop worrying about me and you know when a co-worker don't like you when they literally give you passive aggressive energy like you can be direct i'm a grown lady you can speak to me directly, say what you need. I will let you know if it's feasible for me to be able to do it or not. And I personally don't do well with passive aggression. Mm -mm. It's even wilder because you're not even my manager and you're trying to clock me. Don't try to clock my tea. Like, especially if you're not a manager, if you're not a supervisor, why are you trying to see what I got going on? Like, I should be the least of your concern. This is how you tell someone in a professional way you got me fucked up. Hi, my name's Bella and I share how to say not so nice things but in a nicer way. So this is what you say. There must have been some confusion on your part regarding our last communication so let me provide some clarity. The amount of times that I have seen people at work change their story and wash their hands so they don't get in trouble, baby. Let's talk about it. Hola, my name is Chris and I have been in healthcare for 11 years and I'ma be honest, this hasn't happened to me because I love the word no. And I also love a paper trail, okay? <laughs> People forget that when you're at work, you can say no. If you don't feel comfortable, you can say no. If you don't feel safe, you can say no. If somebody asks you to do something that goes against the rules, baby, you can say no. I know somebody who worked at a hospital for 15 years and one of their coworkers asked to look up some patient information. Well, she broke a HIPAA law and HIPAA are the laws that protect patient information and patient privacy. When the hospital came asking what happened, that coworker that asked washed their hands and literally said, I don't know what you're talking about. That was not me. I didn't ask her to do nothing. What do you think happened to the lady of 15 years? She got fired. I'm just saying. It's not worth it to lose your license, to lose your livelihood, or to lose your job just because you can't say no. Paper trail. You know how many times a doctor has come up to me and asked me to do a test on a patient, even though our policy says we shouldn't? Baby, I pull this out and I'm like, okay doctor, I just need you to sign right here that says that you take full liability and responsibility if something happens to the patient. Nine times out of 10, they're like, oh, a paper trail. <laughs> no girl, it's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll find another test. Oh, okay. You don't ever want to be in a situation where somebody doesn't have a paper trail and somebody washes their hands and says, I never said that. I'm just watching out for you. How do I threaten them without threatening them so I don't lose my job? Dear Todd, I hope this email finds you before I do. Hmm. Do that sound like a threat? It kind of do.
He gonna go to HR. That ain't it. I can't. I can't put that one. Hold on. I'm gonna try this again. What should I say to this man? Dear Todd, I heard you and Jim were emailing about me. CC me yourself or CC these hands. Nah. That's for sure a threat. Hey, Veronica, do you have a quick second? I just have a question. Yeah. Are you done with today's project? Yeah, I finished that project a little bit ago. Could I please bother you to help Jenny? She's just falling a little behind. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll help her out. No problem. Hey, Veronica, um, I know that you are Speedy Gonzalez and you probably finished that project already. Yeah, I emailed it to you about 20 minutes ago. Trust me, your hard work does not go unnoticed. Um, Do you think you could help Jenny again today? Sure. No problem. Hey, Veronica, are you done with today's project? No, I'm actually still working on today's project. Oh, okay. Well, if you get a moment, um, do you mind helping yeah, Jenny? Yeah, if I get done, I, I'll go over and help her. But for right now, I'm, I'm still working on it. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, no problem. Girl, I thought you were done with that. Of course I'm done. I've been done for two hours. Then why don't you want to help Jenny? What'd she do to it's you? It's not that I don't want to help her. The quicker that I get my work done, the more I'm having to help somebody else. She gets paid more than I do. And she does half the work that I do. Okay, so no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do extra work. That means I'm doing my work plus her work. I'm not gonna do it. So I'm just gonna tell her that I'm gonna stop doing my projects fast. I'm just gonna do my projects in the time that it takes everyone else to do the projects. Otherwise I'm doing double the work for less money. Absolutely not. I'm so sick of this job and let me tell y'all why. It seems like every day I come in this bitch. And it's a new rule or a new issue with something I'm doing. And you might be like, why you got that napkin tucked in your shirt? It's because I'm eating lunch in my car. You want to know why I'm eating lunch in my car instead of at my desk in my fucking office? Because the district manager comes in today, like he always does. He knocks on my door because my door is always closed. It's cold as fuck in there. I keep the heat on. Everybody complained about my heat being on. So I keep my door closed. Cool. He knocks on my door. He comes in. He's like, yeah, see that door is closed. And I'm like, yeah. It's always closed. Like he said it every time he come here, it's, it's always closed. And he's like, well, I just need you to leave the door open because we have an open door policy, blah, blah, blah. So I said open door policy typically refers to higher ups and managers letting you know that their door is always open. You come in and talk to them. I'm not a higher up. I'm not a manager. My door doesn't need to be open 24 seven. If somebody needs to talk to me, they can come in and talk to me. They don't knock on my door. No way. They just bust that bitch in when they need to come in there. And he like, well, it just sends the wrong message. It just seems like you're not a part of the team that's not very welcoming i said i talk to my coworkers every single day you know i talk to my coworkers every single day and they know i talk to them every single day and they know that if they need something they can come in here and he's like well it just doesn't give that it needs to give the illusion that blah 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 i'm not hearing that i'm really not i just don't understand why my door being closed affects y'all so fucking much that's not hindering nobody from doing their job it ain't preventing you from getting in touch with me whenever you need to. And it's not affecting my work performance. So why is it such an issue? Why is it mandatory for me to have my fucking door open? And he's like, well, what if it makes somebody else feel like they can't approach you or they're uncomfortable because they won't feel like they're bothering you, blah, blah, blah. If they felt uncomfortable or like they were bothering me, they would not bust in that bitch 24 seven without knocking. And they wouldn't say half the shit they say. And then he's like, well, we're just going to work on keeping it open for now. Like, how, how do we feel about that? How's that? I feel like I don't have a fucking choice. That's what I feel like. I don't understand why it's so hard to mind your business and leave me the fuck alone. I really don't understand. Motherfuckers be at this job doing everything on God's green earth. But me closing my fucking office door is where you draw the line, bitch. Let me tell you about the worst colleague I ever had in my life. I hated her. I still hate her. Me and her. I think she hated me just purely because I was younger than her. For those that have worked, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And for those that aren't working at the moment, you'll find out. There will be some colleagues that will hate you just purely because you're younger than them. This woman was in her 40s. I'm in my 20s. We had the same job and the exact same salary. So why does she micromanage me like she was my manager? When I say micromanage, when I say micromanage, it started very subtle. I was new and she was the one who was tasked to teach me how to do the job. But then what she started to do is once I got the hang of it, she would still ask me to send screenshots of my work. At this job, I was working from home. I never met this bitch in my life. She made my life miserable in my own home. She would ask to see screenshots. Then what would happen is there were other times where I would do my work. She would then message me on Microsoft Teams and remind me to do the work. 
that I'd already done. So I'd say, oh, I've already done it. And she'd go, have you? She'd then look and see I'd already done it. This happened every week. She then, then, this was the final way. I could just, I could name like a hundred things. She wanted to check in with me every day. Every day she would ring me to be like, so what have you done today? What have you done today? By this point, I've worked there eight months. I know damn well what I'm doing. Also, our work was separate. Like we did the same things, but it was almost like the task we had, we'd split in half. So it's not like anything I did, any work I did wouldn't affect her work. Any mistakes I made wouldn't affect her. The final straw, the final fucking straw. So where I worked, every job I've ever had has actually been like this. So if you don't want to work nine to five, you can do eight till four or 10 till six, as long as you get your eight hours done. And every job I'd ever worked at, I had done eight till four. But this job I'd been doing nine to five and then I decided I wanted to do eight till four. So I asked my manager if I could do that. She said, yeah, no problem. I then asked my colleague, I need to give her a name. I'm gonna call her Karen. I asked Karen if I could do the eight till four. I was asking out of politeness. I was basically telling her I'm going to be doing eight till four, but I'll ask you to make it seem polite. She said, you can't, you're not allowed. And I was like, I am allowed. And she was like, well, did you speak to our manager? And I said, yes. She then emailed my manager to ask if I was telling the truth. And then the next day, this is where I lost it. She told me that whenever I wanted to go on lunch, I had to let her know. I got an hour lunch break. She told me that I'd have to let her know before I was going. She then told me I had to say good morning to her every time I started work so that she would know exactly what time I started. And the same with goodbye. By this point, I'd already considered fucking reporting her. I'd already considered snaking on her to my manager because I shouldn't have to deal with that every single day. In the space of a year, the year before I worked there, there had already been six people who had came and left that job. And I think it's because of her. So when she said that to me about having to say good morning to her, having to tell her when I'm going for lunch, all I did was basically repeat back her demands. I was like, so just so I understand, I have to say hello and goodbye to you every day. She said, maybe we can talk to our manager about this. And I was like, yes, we fucking will. I rung them first and I said, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna end up quitting. I'm gonna end up leaving. This is bullying at this point. She would bully me because as well, you know, like I said, how she would like always ask me like, have you done this? Have you done this? There was times where she would tell me I'd done something wrong. And then I'd say, what did I do wrong? And then she'd come back to me an hour later and be like, oh no, sorry, you didn't do it wrong. But she never said, sorry. I said, she said, sorry, but she didn't say sorry. She'd be like, oh no, I've checked. Yeah, you're right. Bullying. In the end, in the fucking end, we had to have this Microsoft team meeting, all of us together, me, her, and my manager. And my manager was very much on my side. Like, listen, if she wants to start at eight and finish at four, she can, and she doesn't have to say when she's coming in work. Like you can see I'm online anyway. But the compromise to keep, what did I call her, Karen? To keep Karen happy so that Karen could like check that everything was going smoothly and okay. We would have to have a meeting together, the three of us, every Monday morning and every Thursday afternoon. I hate that kind of shit. I'm the type of person, I just wanna work. I just wanna go in, do my job and get my paycheck. I didn't used to be like that. When I first started work, I was the hardest little worker. Always thinking about promotion, now I don't care. I'm the type of worker now that will do the bare amount for the most amount of money. When it comes to a corporate job. My side hustles, no, 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 I love them. I'll put all my energy into it. But for a corporate government job, don't care do the least amount of work for the most amount of money. Two days a week, we had to have a meeting and it would be so pointless. It'd be like five minutes long, just so Karen could feel better. Oh my God, I'm gonna end up thinking of more examples because I know they're so, like I literally, I worked there for like three, four years. And that was all like the first year, the, the last two years was good. The last two years, she like fucked off and left me alone. But that first year, oh my God, I was gonna quit. I was going to quit. Hey Veronica, do you have a second? Yep. I just needed to bring it to your attention because I was told that you're a little difficult to work with and a little combative. Who told you that? I can't really tell you who told me to avoid. What do you mean you can't tell me? Well, to avoid any conflicts or, you know, hostile work environment. Okay. And what was the situation that made me difficult to work with? I feel like if I tell you that, it narrowed down the person that it was with. So, so you're coming to me telling me that someone thinks I'm difficult to work with. You won't tell me who it is, and you won't tell me what the situation was. I just wanted to bring it to you. If this was a court of law, I had the right to face my accuser. How do you know that this person doesn't have a personal vendetta against me? I, I didn't. How do you I know didn't. that this person's intentions are legit and not just trying to get me fired or try to get me in trouble when I can't defend myself adequately because you won't tell me who it is? I just wanted to bring it up so you could work on your behavior. Well, I can't fix a problem that I don't know is happening. 
if you won't tell me what the situation was or who the person was, then we don't even need to be having this conversation. I'm just trying to keep the peace. Uh, you know, I don't want you to be difficult. I just... I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm not trying to be difficult. But if you're going to come accusing me of something, then I want to be able to look that person in the face and make sure that they're being honest about what they're saying. But you want to protect them. That's fine. We don't need to have this conversation. And if we need to have it, then we're going to go to HR and then all of us are going to be there, including this mystery person.